everyone chill. Nope, everyone chill. Everyone chill. I just need the food right here. Just need the food here. Just need the food here. We just, it's like diffusing a bomb. Bomb diffused. Pip dip. Where's my little baby that's now a gargantuan sized creature? Hey kiddo, come on up here. Come on up here. And look at my beautiful mangrove plants. These are red mangroves. These guys are the black mangroves. One of them was starting to fall over, so I zip tied it here to this uh, to this other red mangrove. They're looking beautiful. This one I cut right at the knob, and now it's gonna be like a nice bush rather than this thing that's just going straight up. I don't want a straight up mangrove plant to the ceiling. I want a nice, nice bush. So that's gonna look beautiful. We got all the little fish in here, and we've got Miss Pipsqueak, who's quickly outgrowing her name. Here, wait, come here, come here. Hey Munchkin, can you finish eating that and then just come here? Hold on, hold on. Okay, look at, show everybody how big, I gotta scrub the bottom of her shell. But look how big she got. She's like a normal size. So now she's growing at a normal rate that a normal Diamondback Terrapin would grow at. So she's about the size of like a year old, maybe a year and a half old, despite being, I think she's around two. Yeah, she's coming up on two years old. So she's about a year behind in growth, roughly. I can tell she's a female. That tail is nice and small. There's still time for her to, I don't know, it could drop out of nowhere. I've seen weirder things happen, but... Odds are pretty low. Uh, I've worked with this species for a long time. I'm gonna say that tail, that tail ain't dropping anytime soon, especially when you compare it to the boys. The boys were like half that size and their tails dropped. Please don't eat the orange guppies, or platies, excuse me. I'm trying to selectively breed for these neon orange platies. And instead, oh, timer just went off. Instead, we're getting some weird colored ones, but that's Pip Dip. That's the update on my little baby nugget. Also the shrimp. Uh, just in general, doing awesome. Like no updates on the shrimp. Just there, there's more of them. There's more of them than we last checked. Uh, I, I love my shrimp. I freaking, I love my shrimp. If we come out here, they all just took off, but all the boys are doing wonderfully. They all want to eat to the food that I am not going to give to them because I already fed them today. That young man does not have a name. That's Mr. Beef who's looking great, his shell is starting to look really good after the literal abuse that he went through on a horrible loan. Mr. Snow has gotten huge. He's looking beautiful. That's Bean Sun. There's Mr. Pancake, the OG. I've had him for seven years now. Seven years I've owned that creature. Hi, buddy. Here's all of the girls. Hello, young lady. We're not feeding any of them today, so I don't even want to, I don't want to rile them up. No more flip flops. No flip flops. I don't want to rile them up because I'm not feeding them today. I already fed them yesterday and I don't want them eating too much. Also guys, here's my shrimp costume from a little side project. There are birds that made a nest right in there. Birds made a nest in my shrimp costume, bro. Hey turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I set up this beautiful, cheap, easy, stupid, dummy little, uh, little DIY uh, box turtle slash Reeves turtle setup slash whatever the heck I decide to put in here. So hear me out, it started like this. This is a Tough Stuff 110 gallon stock tank, right? Stock tank just like that, just like that one, okay? I had it, I filled it up with some dirt, okay? Literally, Back here, y'all, bear with me. I went back here and I dug a hole and I grabbed all this dirt. I filled this tub with the dirt. Now, if I were smarter, I would have put like an actual drain here and like a screen or something, but I, I, I didn't do that because I'm dumb. So I just leave this half open so water can just drain out right here. Took this 110 gallon Tough Stuff stock tank, right? Took this wooden frame. This wooden frame, I just bolted together and I staple gunned this PVC coated mesh, wire mesh, stapled it onto the wood the same way I did over here. Hi. Hi, Mr. Snow. You basking, getting some afternoon sun? The same way I did over here. I do it the same. This is my new favorite uh, predator proofing. Raccoons, uh, <laughs> I miss Flip. Raccoons especially are what I'm afraid of over here. Uh, so that's my number one, number one thing that I'm afraid of that I'm trying to protect against. Raccoons are smart, they'll get in here. Then I took this piece of wood, just tossed two screws down, one there, one there, toss this on here, put this on with just three screws, and now 
this locks and I just put a screw right through here or like a bolt or a, mainly it's for a padlock and this thing you can't lift up so no critters can get inside of here. So as far as hardware, let's just go over the hardware real quick, the, the nitty gritty to the predator proofing. Okay, this I got from Amazon. This is wood I got for free. These were kind of expensive and the screws I already had, okay? Then I just took this two by, a piece of two by six, scrap two by six, took three bolts that I got for about $6 with the washers and with the nuts from the hardware store, okay? And I just bolt this piece of wood to this tub. So basically I drill a hole straight down, put that down, and then I put a nut and just twist it and tighten it. I hand tighten it. I didn't even have to use tools. One here, one here, one here. So this thing, this back end is not moving. This I built a while ago and I just had extra, a hinge here, a hinge right there, and this just one screw on another scrap piece of wood. So that way, watch this. So that way, this thing's not moving, so nothing can lift this and get in here. Look at that little backstop, so that way it doesn't hit the house. Boom, beautiful. Look at, look at how nice. All right, so we bolt the wood to the back to give it a base, to, to something to hold onto. We hinge this cover onto it. So now, once this thing is down and locked, you can't lift it up. Nothing can get under here, nothing can get under here. So that's the predator proofing on this bad boy and it works beautifully. It works with this tub. Easy fellas, I did the same thing back here with this tub. I only used two bolts on this one. Same thing, nothing, nothing is getting in here. Nothing is getting in there. Same thing with this. We have that middle bracket that's bolted down to the wood and then I just hinge onto the, so there's one piece that's stuck solid, one piece that's stuck solid, and then we hinge onto that solid piece that's bolted. Again over here, solid piece, and then we hinge onto that solid piece, and that's how we get in. So I add this dirt, this sand, because I'm near the coast, okay? Toss it in here. When it rains, which it just did yesterday, I open up that plug, just not all the way, so all the sand doesn't come out like it started to, and it will drain. If I were smarter, I would have had a more effective uh, drain system, but I didn't because I just kind of, guys, I half did this. Like, I really half butted it. I, re I just didn't care. This material I found in the woods, right behind, look, come, come with me. Come with me, children. Look, look at this, guys. I just came over here, went like this. Get this surface material, leaves, pine needles, whatever the heck else. And I just gathered this all up in a tub. And I just, oh my goodness, I just stepped in the hole. Oh, I just stepped right in the hole. I'm so stupid. And then I just toss it in here. So there's a place for the water to drain so my box turtle does not drown even though most juvenile neonate box turtles can handle water, especially the Chinese box turtle which is what I have in here, Miss Otis. So I toss all this beautiful material, I tossed a fern, a little pothos, a little creeping jenny. Normally you would just use like a normal size water dish, uh, like a small plastic container. I decided to double this up and put my Reeves turtle out here. He's somewhere in here. Oh, here, peep the footage of me moving him out here. All right, Mr. Shinji, come here, come here, come here. All right, buddy, let's take you out. New home time, outdoors, outdoors, Tuesday, Tuesday. All right, buddy, hold on one second. Stay right there, stay right there, don't move. Let's get these fake plants in here real quick. Just until those nice live ones can grow in. All right, come on, buddy. Let's see how you like it. Feel that sunlight. Feel that sunlight in like any second now, he's just gonna take off into the water. Go ahead, bud. There you go. New setup just for you. There goes Mr. Shinji. So essentially what's gonna happen is these live plants are all gonna grow in. The more the live plants grow in, I'm gonna pull out the plastic fake ones. I'm just using this for now so he has somewhere to feel safe and secure. The rain will flush this out. And uh, it, you know, I shouldn't need a filter on this little system at all. I'll put in some small fish just to eat any icky nasty bugs that get in here. But this is pretty much it. Plant my plants, add my surface cover, add some sticks, some air plants here, some Spanish moss that we're making sure is in the middle so they can't use it to climb up and out. And our box turtle is gonna hide naturally in this. Look at that, 
just as they would do in the wild. This is a Chinese box turtle, but this goes for your Eastern, your three-toed, even some of your, your more expensive box turtles, your other Asian box turtles, your Quora. This is Quora Flavo Marginata, Galbinifrons, uh, Pictorata. They'll all appreciate something like this out for the spring or the summer. Get your turtles out side nothing beats that natural uvb and whatnot so there's little otis chinese box turtle just hiding super naturally out here so yesterday when it rained she was up looking for food foraging i tossed in a little bit of a missouri aquatic turtle diet um just all kinds of this is my my this is my basic food mix if you want to know what's in here i answer any and all questions on my patreon literally it's the price of a cup of coffee a month and you support me and help me be able to do things like this and teach you guys how to pinch pennies because i spent this tub is about 80 bucks at tractor supply i got it a while ago for cheaper than that you can get it off marketplace for probably mm, 40 bucks building this is probably another 30 everything else you can get for free all of these plants I got for nothing, found someone throwing that out, found someone throwing that out. I got a clipping actually that I grew that from. That I got for three bucks, that I got for three bucks. This tub I got for 10 bucks. This is what I'm saying. And all of this other material I got for nothing. It's really, guys, it's that easy. It's that easy to get your box turtle outside. Oh, Bodan, it cannot possibly be this easy to get my box turtle outside. Yes, it can. It's the easiest thing on the planet. When it rains, the box turtles love to come out and forage for food, look for all kinds of yummy nom noms. So I made sure to feed her yesterday, but this is what she spends 90% of the day doing. She's just hidden. Around the evening time, she'll come out looking for food. And this is a nice water dish for her that she can soak in. The humidity is high, especially under all of this cover. So her shell is gonna grow nice and smooth. Humidity is key for box turtles, especially to grow a nice smooth shell. That's why a lot of people will keep them in shallow water with sphagnum moss for the first year or two of their lives. You guys just have to trust me. This was the easiest thing to ever freaking put together. It was so impossibly, incredibly simple, you have no idea. If it gets too hot during the day, they have all of that cover. And even then, I got this extra Spanish moss. Toss it right on top. I make sure that it's not too far down. Make sure that they can't climb up here and somehow get out. Otis is too large. Shinji, my Reeves turtle, could potentially, if he found a way, get out. But again, there's no ramp anywhere around here no ramp and if i built all this up in the corner maybe but that's why i have it built up in the middle where he certainly cannot get out i wouldn't necessarily do this for a fresh fresh box turtle once they're about six months old once they're about this big probably about this big this enclosure is perfect for your box turtle until they're probably three years old probably from like six months to three years i would say this is probably a really good setup, even for one adult Chinese box turtle. This is not a bad enclosure. This is a ramp that goes all the way down to the bottom of the water. This acts as a ramp for Otis to get out. This acts as a ramp to get out and this. So lots of ways to avoid any drowning hazards. That's the two things you wanna be worried about. Drowning hazards in their dish, overheating. So you wanna make sure you have all this stuff and climbing out. You wanna make sure that this isn't built all the way up here. This could act as a perfect ladder to come up and out if they can fit through these things. Otis cannot, Shinji can. All right, guys, I ended up searching in here to find Shinji. Here's Shinji, Reeves turtle, doing absolutely beautiful. Oh, Shinji can't even fit out of this. Nope, Shinji can't fit out of that either. So, all right, we're actually good. Sorry, Shinji, I just wanted to make sure you were alive. Okay, bye, sorry, bud. This goes like this. And I can even hear Miss Otis starting to come out as the sun starts to go down. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more. I will give updates on the other turtles coming up soon. And I'll see y'all in the next one.